OK, hi, I'm Heiko. Um, I'm going to talk about ARCA streams. Unfortunately, I forgot to prepare slides, so all I can present are demos and live coding. I hope you love Scala coding. Who loves Scala coding? OK, great. Um, by the way, uh, the title of this talk is uh, Learn You Advanced ARCA Streams for Great Good. Who knows ARCA Streams at all? OK, not too bad. So I will do a brief introduction for those who don't know ARCA Streams, and then I will focus on the more advanced parts of it. OK? Um, whenever you have questions, just let me know. You can shout at me anytime. All right, so here's a little program I wrote, written in ARCA Streams. It does what you hopefully can see on the screen. And uh, what we are going to do now is we want to implement that using ARCA Streams. It's not too hard. Um, what we need to do is we need to create an application with a main method. We need to start an actor system, and we need an actor materializer. The materializer does some magic in the background. Essentially, it takes what we use to define our stream topology. We define it as a blueprint, and it takes that blueprint and transforms it into the machinery. Uh, the actors under the hood, because of course, Arca Streams uses actors under the hood. So, in Arca Streams, in the API of Arca Streams, we have the possibility to express a linear stream topologies in a very simple way using building blocks with either one inlet and one outlet, which is called a flow, or just one outlet, which is called a source, and one inlet, which is called a sink. These three fundamental building blocks can be composed together to form something which can be run, which is called a runnable graph. So let's do that. Let's first start with the source, which produces a single string. string. Let's copy and paste this learn you ACA streams for great good. And uh, once we have that, we can um, let's say, feed it into a sync using the two combinator. The sync for each will apply the function we provide to any streamed element. So let's just print ln. What we now have is a runnable graph. Just ignore the not used for the time being. And therefore, we can run it. All right, let's give it a try in IntelliJ. As you can see here, one line was printed. Great, we're almost there. <laughs> Hooray. As you also could see, the application did not terminate. So this thing here is a graph running, but the application is still waiting for the active system to be terminated. So instead of using a source single, we should probably use source repeat in order to get where we want to get. Um, if we look there, we have seven lines of learn new ARCA streams for great good, right? A source repeat will repeat endlessly. So do you have an idea how we could terminate that after seven tries? Yeah, take. But after seven, I would say take seven, not six. OK, take seven. If you look at the API, it's a lot like the collection API, but please don't confuse streams with collections. You can construct streams from collections, then those streams are finite um, streams, but streams can be uh, unbounded and they're always volatile. Okay, let's give that a try. Oh, sorry. I want to run it again. Okay, almost there. But this is too fast, right? If you remember uh, the example, it was <laughs> slowed down a little bit. And in order to slow down things, in order to slow down this source here, it is a source which produces strings, we can use uh, the throttle method. And we could say, okay, one per second 
or 500 milliseconds, whatever. Um, maximum burst of one, and then we say throttle mode shaping, which will slow down this source repeat, which is super fast. Okay, let's give it another try. Oh, maybe I can run it here. All right, works like expected. That's great. Um, we're not yet there because if you look at that demo here, I will run it again. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Wow. I want that. Um, you can see two things. First of all, each uh, next line is indented by an increasing indent, and also each character seems to be printed individually, not each line, but each character. Okay, so we need to fix two, those two things. So first of all, um, we need to think about how to convert those strings into characters. Um, and we can apply a method called um, map concat, where uh, we, we take a string, and then um, the map concat expects a function from an element of the stream to um, a collection, or a traversable, or something like that. So we can just use the string itself again, because a string is uh, a sequence of characters, right? Um, you can see this little uh, underline, which is showing that. Um, so now, if you look at the type, this source is no longer a source of string, but it's a source of char, of characters. That's what we want. Therefore, we don't want to print ln, but we want to print, okay? And not only one per uh, 500 millis, but maybe 42, because 42 is a great number. Um, okay, let's run it again. Yeah, it looks all very good. We forgot to add the line breaks, but that's not a big deal. And we also have to add the indent. So we are almost there. To get an indent from a sequence, what would you do with a collection API? Stop. Sorry? Stop. Yeah, zip would be a great idea. I agree. Zip with an index. So what we could do here is we could zip the source with another source, calling the zip combinator. And here we use source dot from iterator. Uh, and we have to specify a function which creates an iterator. Iterator dot from zero, I would say. Okay. Now this source here gives us tuples of string and int. Okay. So now we have the line numbers. So here we have our strings and the line number. Um, so what we could do here is we say val indent equals uh, blank character times n. That's funny. You can multiply strings with an int in Scala. I love it. And then we do the following. We first apply the indent, then uh, the, the uh, string itself. Um, no, it's, it's a character, by the way, but anyway. Um, and we must not forget to add uh, the line break. OK, let's run it again. Yeah, that looks like it should look like. Hooray. So that is a linear stream doing this funny thing. What needs to be mentioned is the materialized value, the concept of a materialized value. We have ignored that so far. Every stage in either a linear stream or in a graph, which could also be expressed using uh, ACA streams, um, has two type parameters, at least. Um, so here this source is a source producing strings and creating a materialized value of type not used. Not used is like unit, it's used less. But there are interesting materialized values out there. So for example, this uh, sync for each, it does have an interesting uh, materialized value. It gives you a uh, future of done. Done is also like unit, but more expressive. Uh, having a future of done signals when the stream has, or gives you a signal when the stream has completed. So what we would like to have is this uh, materialized value. So whenever you combine two stages, for example, using the two combinator here, um, there are two materialized values in question. The one 
of the left and of the right. And by default, the left is kept. Here, we therefore have to use the two mat uh, combinator, uh, where we have to specify a function uh, dealing with the two materials values of the left and the right. And here we are only interested in the right, so we call keep right, which is just a function uh, keeping the second argument and dropping um, the first. So therefore, what we now have here is a runnable graph, which once it is run, which you do here with the run method, gives us a future of done. So what we can say is well done, equal well done. Uh, well done is uh, this here. And now we can do uh, done dot on complete, just register um, a callback, whatever it is, failure or success, um, and shut down the system. And once we're there, uh, let me run it again. I think it is really like the demo application I've shown you before. All right, all right, all right. Okay, process finished with Xcode 0. So that was really um, the basics of Arca Streams in a nutshell. Um, we defined this little uh, linear graph or linear stream processing topology using a couple of combinators or uh, factory methods from the Arca Streams API. Any questions so far? Okay, now let's start doing something more interesting. There was a question? Okay. Okay, so whenever you combine two stages, like a left and a right stage, using the two or the via combinators, um, each of those stages has a materialized value, okay? And if you just use the two or via combinator, by default, there will be a keep left applied. So you keep the left materialized value. In this case, you keep the materialized value of this source, the source repeat. And it has a not used materialized value. It, the, you would keep the unit, the not used. That's not interesting. Keep right keeps the interesting one, keeps the materialized value of this sync for each. And that gives you the future of done. You could also do keep both. Okay, that tuples up both. So if you now look at the type here, um, you get a runnable graph with a tuple of not used future done. So you could always tuple up all the materials values. You never have to lose one. Usually you want to lose the not used, but there are some interesting ones uh, and you always want to keep them. So you have to apply the keep right and keep left properly. The materials value thing is a little tricky, uh, but it's very powerful. <laughs> All right. Um, what I want to show you now is how to build a advanced stream topology doing something non-trivial. And the non-trivial thing to do um, is the following. Um, I have a web server running, and it gives you a stream of server sent events. Do you know server sent events? It's something like WebSockets in just, just for, for the server side push. Um, so if I curl localhost 8000, as you can see here, um, we get these events. Those events are just text-based thingies. And they stop. The server is implemented in a way that it gives you this learn your Arca streams for great good character by character. All the events are enumerated, um, and it stops after, uh, well, the first 37. Let's assume this stopping happens because the connection to the web server was terminated. It was dropped, OK? Here it is implemented that way. But let's assume this stream is endless, but the connection drops occasionally. What we want to do as a client now is we want to consume this stream of events and once the connection drops or is interrupted, we want to reconnect. And service and events allows us to specify a last event ID. So if I do a dash H last event, sorry, ID of let's say 99, 
look at what the server is sending us. The IDs start from 99. So this way, service and events are a really powerful way uh, to build a reconnecting client. Now the client just needs to keep track of the last event it has uh, received and then reconnect. Uh, and we can, we can do that with a flow. No, not with a linear flow, but with a circular graph. And it is sketched out here. So the interesting part here is this flow, it's a linear flow, which will be run several times. So this flow here will be run uh, for every connection until it is terminated. So um, we get events from the server as a source of service and event using HTTP. Um, we will use a last element custom stage, we have to write that ourselves, which remembers the last event that was flowing through uh, this stream. So that gives us a materialized value of future of option of service and event. Okay, so once we materialize this flow, uh, we have this future and that gets completed with the last service and event, if there was one, therefore it is an option. Uh, and here's a handler, um, it's a sync. Uh, we want to do something with those service and events. In this demo, we just print them. In a real world scenario, we would probably store them in a database or something. So this sort of communication could be used between two microservices, by the way. Uh, if you have event sourcing and microservices and one service depends on the other and wants to consume the events reliably, you could apply that um, as an alternative to using buses, by the way. And once a connection drops, um, this cycle kicks in. Uh, so we get the events, we handle the events. Um, we need to unzip because we zip together uh, the materials value of this handler and of this last um, um, event. Uh, so uh, the handler materials value goes out of this overall source we are building. So the whole block we are building here has one outlet of type A. The future of optional service and event goes back to another processing stage we have to write, which gives us the current last event ID. Uh, so if there was none in this uh, run, we would use the last, and so on. And then we feed it in again into a merge, which also gets fed by a one-time trigger, which starts the whole circle. Does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> so we get there step by step. Let's first focus on getting the events uh, from that server and uh, getting the events from the server. So something has been set up here. Um, the interesting parts are in this apply method. And uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, get the events from the server um, as a future of an option of a service and event. So let's do def get. Um, a get method that already takes the last event ID, but we'll ignore that for the moment. Um, so in order to um, get it from the server, we just do a val request equals get. We have an URI, sorry, your URI as a parameter up there. Uh, we could add a header uh, text event stream. That's according to the specification, uh, the content type we have to use. And um, what we could do now is we could use the send function here, which takes a request to a future of HTTP response using the Arca HTTP API, of course, uh, request. And uh, that gives us a future of response. Uh, if we flat map that to uh, unmarshal, unmarshal uh, is another feature of Arca HTTP which allows us to transform responses to domain objects. So in this case here, we want to transform it to a uh, source of service and event And any. Okay. So uh, that is a future of source of service and event. Hooray, we're almost there. That gives us the request. The only problem we still have is to, to make that possible, we have to import event stream unmarshalling. So the whole event uh, streaming thing, the whole SSE, is not built into Akka HTTP yet. It's a, it's a separate library called Akka SSE. 
um, but it is imported here in uh, the class path. All right, so that gets us um, those um, service and events or source of service and event from the server. Um, what we also have to do is we have to handle the events. So once we get a source of service and event and any, we have to do something with it. Well, here's a handler, okay? So what we can do is we can just do events dot run with handler. That's it. That gives us the materialized value of the handler. So this events run with handler is more or less the right hand side here without this last element, which we will add later. So finally, we want to get started with a flow of option, a string. So this option of string is the last event ID, um, if it is there, if it is defined. Um, we map async um, over this get, okay? And then we map it over the handle method. And that's almost nice. It seems to be a mistake. Let me compile it in SPT. Ah. Mm. Wow. Anyway. Maybe some stupid import here. Uh, I imported some wrong accept. Huh? Ah, I forgot the accept. Oh, sorry, guys. We want to when I accept text event stream, okay? You can, you can help me if you want. <laughs> I'm sure some have noticed that issue, huh? All right. Um, and uh, what we have to return here is a source. I cannot understand. Why I have used one here? Oh, that's the parallelism for the map async. Yeah, so map async accepts a function that returns a future. Um, and uh, if you allow more than one to be processed in parallel, you would increase that to two or four or eight or 10,000, whatever. Yep. Mm, yes, but this is uh, lifted into a function. I mean, because map async expects a function from um, optional string to future of blah, blah. All right, so we use a source single um, with this initial last event ID, which is uh, given here as a parameter. And then we go via, that's the combinator to combine a source with a flow uh, the get and handle events. And that's it, hopefully. Let me compile it here and see if I have screwed up something. Aha, uh -huh. I have screwed up something. So I have this nice tool which takes me to the proper solution. It's probably just a small typo somewhere. Hooray. <laughs> Okay, so mm, let's just run it. I'm using restart, which is uh, from the SBT Revolver plugin. Great plugin is Matthias here. Oh, never mind. Great plugin by Matthias. And as you can see here, it seems to work. Uh, our client is printing that stuff. Uh, but of course, uh, it will uh, then terminate here after the last event from the server. So in the next step, we do something very, very simple. We have ignored the last event ID so far. We haven't sent that to the server. So what we should do now is we should add it as a header according to the specification. So that's just a really, really easy one. So we have the last event ID, which is an option, so we can fold left. Go left, come on, where are you? Uh, we take the request, and uh, if we have um, an ID, we do the following r.addHeader. Uh, and that's not I, we have to use the 
last event ID, header, and feed the I in it. Okay, that's, that's all we have to do to really uh, tell the server to produce events starting after this last event ID. And if you look at the client code here, we, um, we have the sum 10 as a last event ID. So instead of this code here, which starts with zero, we probably, if we restart, um, start from 11 now. Hopefully, would have it. OK, here we are. Yeah, as you can see here, we start from 11. So this little change did what it was expected to do. OK. Now, let's do more advanced things. Um, next step is to introduce custom processing stage. What we have seen so far are the, or have been the sources and sinks and stuff which are provided by the Archistreams API. The source repeats or single, sync for each, whatever. There's a lot of these uh, stages, the map, the map async, etc. But what if you need something special? And uh, Akka HTTP allows, sorry, Akka Streams allows you to um, define your own custom processing stages. And in order to do that, uh, you have to extend from either graph stage, or if your graph stage should have an interesting materialized value other than not used, you have to extend from this graph stage with materialized value. Oh, that's a name, huh? Um, what we have to, f to define here is what the shape of this thing should be. How should the box look like? How many inlets and outlets should it have? And the box should be a really simple box. If you take a look again here, this last element stage should not touch the elements at all. It should just remember the last element. So whatever gets put into it should leave unchanged. So it's a flow. It has one inlet, one outlet, and therefore it is a flow shape of an arbitrary type A for the inlet and also for the outlet. Therefore, the shape here is a flow shape um, with uh, an inlet of A. We have to give it a name. I'm lazy. I just type in here. And an outlet of type A out. OK? So that's the shape. That's one of the um, members we have to provide, we have to override for this graph stage. And, and now we have to create the graph stage logic, OK? We import from the shape in order to be able to access the inlet and outlet. Um, we have to create the logic and the materialized value. The materialized value should be a future of option of A. So therefore, what do we need? How can we produce futures in Scala? Using promises, right? So we need a promise here. Uh, that's just a promise of option of A. OK? Let's just create an empty promise. What's the problem here? I need a val. Uh, private is not a good idea here. OK. Sorry, guys. And a val is all we need. Um, that's the materials value. And now we have to create the logic. Graph stage logic. We need to feed the shape in here. And by the way, this should go there. Um, so this graph stage logic, well, we already have it. Let's just return the logic and the mat value dot future. That should make the compiler happy. Yeah, it looks good. Um, the graph stage logic defines the behavior of the graph stage, what it does with the elements uh, fed or, or pushed to its in inlets and how it emits, if it emits at all, through its outlets. Okay, And therefore, we would define handlers. But before we can do that, let's uh, remember the last element we have seen. So now we need a var. Uh, let's call it the current. 
element, and that's just uh, sorry an option empty of a because we haven't yet seen a current element, right? And then we do um, set handler on in uh, new in handler. We define a new in handler here, um, and also a new out handler. That's the way how we have to deal with those um, inlets and outlets, sorry. Uh, and these are the mandatory methods we have to implement. So for the out handler, um, which connects to our outlet, we simply um, do a, a, a push. So whenever we, we get a pull, um, sorry, whenever we, we uh, are pulled, um, we can just pull our inlet, okay? Um, so that's a really trivial case. Um, whenever our out handler gets pulled from downstream, if demand is signaled, uh, we will uh, signal this or forward this demand to upstream, to the inlet. Um, a little more tricky here on push. So um, first of all, we so on, on, on push is called whenever an element could be consumed if there's an element available from upstreams. So we want to consume it, right? So we grab it using the grab method. Um, and then we would also uh, push it to downstream, right? So we would push it here uh, to the outlet. And that's essentially a no op uh, stage right now, <laughs> doing nothing. So we need to remember the current element. Hooray. Now we remember it. And the purpose of this whole stage is that the materialized value should become the last element. So therefore, we have to register two handlers um, on this um, in handler, or two. we have to provide two overrides. One is on upstream finish. On upstream finish is uh, what gets called when everything, or when the stream uh, term terminates the normal way, um, not with a failure, but just because the source has ended or the, the, the sink uh, does no longer accept uh, any elements or something like that. So in this case here, we would just complete the material uh, materialized value with a success and provide the current element, right? And we should do the same here on a failure. on upstream failure. We just copy what we did here. Um, we don't want to fail. So this stage, this last element stage, uh, will recover from any failure. So if upstream has a failure, let's say because the HTTP connection was broken, we would then probably get some TCP stream uh, a connection exception from the ACA uh, stream package. Uh, but we're not interested in that because we want to retry, we want to reconnect. So we will recover, and therefore we would then call on upstream finish, okay? Uh, but we would complete the uh, materialized value with the same current element. Does that make sense? It's a custom stage that keeps track of the current element, and once the stream is complete, either by uh, normal completion or by failure, uh, the materialized value becomes the last element. The null value, yes. you're saying? Yes. I have no idea because I've never tried that. Why would you want to do that? Yeah, I've never tried it. I'm not sure. No. Because some are emitting even, so some, it can be some bug in so so it can start emitting so um, I have no idea, honestly. So therefore, I've used the option to either have none or some. Uh, it was by specification in dropping the Oh, well, it's probably not dropping anything. It, it, it might produce a null pointer exception, uh, but I'm not sure. So maybe it's possible. I'm not sure. 
I guess it's not allowed. Because it implements reactive streams, which is Java specification, and it's probably not a good idea. But yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, we, you have to try. It's a quick try. Okay, so now we have this last element stage, and we need to add it to our server sent uh, event client. Um, so our handler here, um, if you remember how this looked like, needs to um, remember the last element. So um, the events would no longer directly be fed into the, the given handler, but we would uh, um, send them via the new last element stage. Last element, so we don't need to specify that. Now, again, using the via combinator would keep the left materialized value, so that's not interesting. We need the mat keep right, because we want to keep this future of option of service and event, right? So now, oh sorry, what's that? This type of this expression is a source of service and event with a materialist value of a future of optional service and event. Hey, that's what we wanted to achieve, great. And what we're going to do, we run it into the handler, but um, we want to keep both the materialist values of the handler. So we say to mat handler, and keep both. Come on, both, right. So um, the type we get back once we run this stream, uh, the materialized value will be a tuple of this future of options, service, and event, and A. A is the materialized value of this handler. Okay, now we have this tupling thing, which brings us into trouble because now we really, after this handle stage, we end up with a tuple of a future and A. Um, this can no longer be expressed in our uh, linear graph uh, that easily. So what we have to do here is instead of using source single via, we have to write a graph at this point, okay, using the graph DSL. So that's not too hard. Um, it's, we're using source dot from graph. We still want to produce a source, right? Um, and here we use the uh, graph DSL uh, create. Um, all right. So within this graph, we have a builder. It's a mutable builder, uh, which is um, used to construct uh, the various stages and connect them together. Um, so the first thing we need is... Um, an unzip stage and also a trigger stage. We need to trigger the whole thing. We already have the trigger up here. It's this source thing, last event ID, but we have to give it a name in order to be able to later connect it. So let's call it trigger. We use builder add to add it to the graph and yeah, we add our source. We also need an unzip stage, builder.add to unzip the future and the A we have. Um, unzip, it's already there in the stream DSL, um, and the unzip takes two parameter. One is this future of option of service and event. Let me copy that for you. All right. And the other is the A, right? Oh, what have I done here? Ah, back. I want to be here. That looks better. Okay. I think now everything should be in place. Now we can use this very nice, those very nice operators to more or less graphically um, connect uh, the stages. So we use the trigger and we connect it to our um, get and handle events. We connect that to our unzip in. And what we return here is the source shape of unzip dot um, out one because we want to return um, the A. Um, I forgot to import some implicits, of course. Graph DSL implicits. No magic without these implicits. <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, thank you guys. Oh, that looks much better. Thanks. And what we also have to do is to connect the unzip dot out zero. Uh, we will ignore it for the time being. 
so we put it into a sync ignore. And uh, eh, I don't know what's wrong here. That should, in theory, work. <sighs> Let me compile it here. And if it doesn't compile, ah. Oh, OK, yeah. This, I, I told you this is an implicit builder. Mm. Now it works. Now we have a graph uh, which doesn't exactly do what we want to do yet, but we're almost there. So um, we have the unzip, uh, which emits an A, and that is uh, connected to the outlet of uh, the combined source. And uh, we also have uh, an outlet here, which we don't yet feed into, into this stage. This is just the last thing we have to do. So right now, all the tests should still run. Uh, it was more or less just a refactoring. So the last thing we need to do, uh, we need to take care of this current last event ID. So we want a flow uh, of, future of, so, uh, of future of option service and event. And uh, we need to get rid of the future, so we need to do a map async one with identity. That's a neat trick to get rid of the future. So the type is a simplified type of flow of future of option service and so a, a flow of option of service and event here, the second argument here. Um, now we have an option of service and event. The, that is the current last event ID, right? Um, and uh, we can use the scan combinator and uh, use as a zero value the initial last event ID, okay? Um, and then um, in the binary function, uh, we have our ID and the event, the service and event. And then we look at the service and event, whether it has an ID, because each service and event can have an ID. So we have an option of an option, right? <laughs> Um, therefore, we have to flat map that. Um, so this is uh, still an option, an option string, which expresses the current last event of the, and if this is none, we would use the last, right? So we use or else the last one, which would, if the server never sends any event IDs, which is stupid, but maybe the server is implemented that way, we would always use the initial last event ID. So not very useful, but I think it's, it's a good default. And uh, the problem with the scan is it, it eagerly emits the, the null value, the zero value, I want to say. So we have to drop one. We are not interested in the very first last event ID. And, and that's it. If we now take the current last event ID um, and put it here, instead of the sync ignore, uh, go away. And if we add a merge stage, and the merge stage um, takes two per, just the, the merge needs the, oh no, it, it's a merge of option of string, right? All right, okay, with, with two ports, then we can, finish this up. We can introduce the merge here, the merge there, and format it nicely. And now we have expressed exactly this cycle uh, using the graph DSL and those operators which we wanted to express here. So here's the merge stage. We go to the get events and handle events. Uh, we unzip. We go to the current last event ID and back. So this runs in cycles whenever the connection over here has dropped, um, either by accident or uh, by implementation. OK, so let's just give it a try and see how this is working in, in practice now. Um, hopefully, it compiles. So what I also would like to do down there is I would like to say docker logs minus f SSE server. Um, you can see some, some old uh, debug outputs whenever an event stream is requested for some event ID, so I will delete that for the time being and just restart our client. Um, 
and that should produce some log output down there. Starting from 10, because we started from 10, so the first thing you see is here 11. And, and now what you can see here is, um, once uh, the stream has completed, um, the server has completed the stream, um, the client is reconnecting. Uh, so this continues endlessly, and you will see uh, more and more requests going to the server with the proper last event IDs. All right. Questions? If there is a map with state, yeah, it's called a, a map stateful, I think, or map async stateful, can remember exactly, yes. So that's the possibility to keep state in a stage. That might be enough or not. If it's not enough, you have to write your own custom stage, which I did here in this case. Uh, that, it would have been possible to, not been possible to express uh, this last element with this uh, map, uh, stateful map, because um, the state is applied to the element processing, but what we really wanted is the materialized value. Okay, but there's a stateful thing. If you just want to like keep some state because of the elements flowing through the stream, that's uh, uh, that standard combinator might be just fine. The question was why. Uh, if there's a reason why I keep left as default, uh, well, either it has to be left or right. <laughs> um, and uh, they had to choose one, pick one, and I think, I think there's no real good reason for it. I w can't remember exactly. Once um, I listened to the discussion of the ACA team, there might be a reason. Maybe um, it's typically more interesting to have uh, the very first materials value. But anyway. Um, you can you can you can use it to write, uh, keep right and keep both, whenever you need to specify that, or customize it. Maybe it's because if you have your custom, then you will, you will propagate all the way. If you start with your custom, yeah. But in this case, we we started with a source a single or a source repeat, and that is materializing to not used. So we had to use the keep right to get the materials value of our custom stage. Yeah. Um, there was a question up there, right? No? Okay, one last question because we are already almost running out of time. Uh, is it possible to, like, in Rx frameworks to define, okay, I want the source to, to run in this spread, like, uh, in this even this much framework? Yeah, there are so many more things, um, auto-fusing and thread boundaries or execution context boundaries to be more precise, yeah. So you can configure a lot of things. You can express which stages should run uh, together, which should have an async boundary in between them, if, uh, if, uh, effectively a, a thread boundary between them. There's a lot of things to uh, configure and not only to configure but also to express here in code. Yes, that's, that's doable. Okay, guys. So thanks a lot. The, the the code is up on GitHub. If you wanna if you wanna check it out, it's H Seberger, my GitHub ID. Learn you Aka streams. Lias, Lias. I don't know how to say that. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.